Hey, how's it going, man? I really want I found listen to that wolf. How is wolves? So how you doing? I really wanted to get that in the video. So I, I was looking for a tape to put on, and then uh, this band Sloth, they're terrible. But on side, the, the B side, I recorded um, a little tape recorder, and so I put it next to my TV oh, oh, like a year or two ago, and I, I was just recording like spaghetti western music, and I forgot about it, and I just found it today, so that's what you're listening to. <clears throat> Hi. It's a very weird Saturday here in San Antonio, Texas, at night of the Buddy Tapes headquarters. It's uh, the day before Christmas Eve. I was off, but uh, my coworker wanted me to go to work to pick up a gift that he had for me, and I was very glad to do it. But just where I work, the traffic isn't horrible. I mean, I've told you about it before. But I was off. If I go early, you know, it won't be too bad. But then I was like, I want to, I want to get up. So I'll go at ten. Fortunately, it wasn't that bad. But in the last video, I wanted to show some stuff, and then I had a damn letter that I don't know where it is. But I got this a record from my good buddy Food. He sent me the one hundred story building drowning in cum. Uh, lathe cut 7 inch that he just did um, I, don't, I don't think food watches my videos I don't, it doesn't get on YouTube but um, this is their their latest record, it's a lathe cut lathe cut, I, I don't I was explaining it but I really don't even really know, it. it's a machine like you hand do it it's two songs they do Speed Freak by Motorhead, but like the Oi, they, it's called Oi Freak, and then they do they do a Sockeye cover, and that's Food's other band, their old band, and it's wheelchair full of full of old men, and just the, he's hand painted it. This is really nice that people are still doing stuff like this. Um. I'll put Food's contact. He, he has an email, but or just go to his uh, his band camp at Wheelchair Full of Old Man Records, uh, and like he's, he does so much great music. Uh, I was reading these. I finally read these new Conans. Man, these are amazing. As I was reading them, I just fell into it. I got into it, and I just totally lost track of time. Everything disappeared and. Art by find it, De La Torre or Rob De La Torre. I've heard. I think it was um, Mike Mignola who said, like, if you copy someone's style, then you're just you're just um, you know you're just a copier. And you never have developed your own style. Well, in Rob Dilatore's case, like, dude, he, he's just channeling John Buscema amazingly. Like, it's so good. And it's written by Jim Zub. This is a good story. He's really trying. He lays it on a little thick with the, with like the. Um, trying to be like Robert E. Howard or like an old pulpy writer, but it works for the most part. And it's a combination of a pretty good story and awesome art. It just really works. And then I finished reading like the Wolverine with the Beast. It doesn't even have like a cool story, like the Beast story. Oh, Weapons of X. That's uh, Beasts of Burden. Uh, that's very creative. It just, it went on. I was like, man, this has gone on for like half a year. Nothing was resolved. It's just very lackluster. But art, 
by Juan Winos Winosa Rip is great. I just feel Wolverine should be getting like better treatment. Here's that other Conan. Conan's got the blue shirt from like when, when I first discovered the Marvel comics. Yeah. Um, oh, and it says uh, they pull in uh, Brule, the Spear Slayer from Call, is in this. Dude, I was like, dude, please do call, do Brule, do Rand McMorrin. Okay, I'm gonna talk about Rebel Moon, Child of Fire, part one. So, I think Zack Snyder is a very bad filmmaker. And, uh, I like Dawn of the Dead and 300. And I just assumed this would be garbage. And mostly it is, but... It's not as, it didn't offend me. I didn't hate it. I wasn't like, uh, but then like, I didn't want to watch it, but then I was like, well, I mean, I don't like them, but you know, I don't want to condemn, just condemn someone because all their other movies suck. And then it looked, it looked kind of cool. So I watched it this morning and it was okay. Oh, uh, the, the cast it has Sophia Batella, who was, um, she was in the Mummy movie with Tom Cruise, and then, uh, oh, fuck, what else? Some other things. She's, uh, she, I, don't, I don't think she's a good lead. Uh, but it has Jaiman Hounsu. I guess that's it for the, it's all the, Spaghetti Western music I recorded. Uh, Jaiman House Hansu, he should be the main character. He's a, everybody likes him. And Ed Screen is the bad guy. I was watching it and my sister walked by and, and she she didn't want to be rude. She said, "What's his face?" And I, I was think, I was thinking the exact same thing. He's got a weird face. Uh, Ray Fisher. Who played Cyborg in the Justice League movies is in this. I was like, man, they Cyborg is such a great character. And uh, Charlie Hunnan, who was in Pacific Rim, and when he came on, I was like, is that is that Heath Ledger's brother? Oh, Carrie Elwes. It's always good to see uh, the Dread Pirate Roberts. And then there's another character in here called Tarek. And a lot of these actors have uh, names as weird as their characters. The actor is Taz, uh, Staz Nair. And I was like, he should be the, the main guy. He looks like a... He looks like a superhero. He A comic book. Man. Yeah. And his stomach muscles were... I was like, oh my god. And then there's a robot character. And when I heard his voice, I was like, that sounds like Anthony Hopkins. I was like, but it can't be. Like, they're not, you're not just going to get Anthony Hopkins just to do a voice of a robot. And it is Anthony Hopkins. He's the robot, his name's Jimmy. There's a lot, a lot of stuff I can nitpick in here. Which I'll try not, well, I, I will. So it's your basic just uh, bad guys versus, uh, like super powerful bad guys versus... Um, like uh, humble good guys. Uh, Sophia Batella is Kara Akra Afric Kara Kara, some name with K's and R's in it, and she's like in this little farming village. And then the, this huge spaceship shows up, and like she's ready to leave. She's all oh, they're bad guys. They're gonna. They're just gonna like take everything and f you over, and that's exactly what they do. They want all their their um, harvest, so they and the bad guys leave, but they leave like uh, some soldiers there. 
Yeah, and the Ed Screen Scrine, his character is named Noble. And he's just, I was like, he's just not, just. Nazis are the best villains. Like you can all you can hate them and you never feel bad what you what you what happens to them. But he he just doesn't have he has a uniform just no swastikas or iron crosses or so leave some soldiers there and these guys are really bad. I mean, I like bad guys like in a movie. I make them really bad, but I think they were just a little too much. They're like wild animals. Except for one, there's like one good soldier, and but the other, the others, they have. It just seems like they have no structure. They're just they're barbarians, but they have cool uniforms. And the first day there, they set up and they're gonna uh, assault this uh, young girl, and they're nitpicking. But I was like, if you're occupying, I mean, I just don't think you would do it right away and so blatantly. But that's uh, the reason for Sophia Batella's character to, she fights them. And the, I didn't know, I, like I thought it would be bloody, but there's no blood, like there's no like gruesome um, graphic, like bullet hits or like, blood splashing, but it was, it was okay. Yeah, I was reading reviews, people complain about Zack Snyder's use of slow, slow motion. I didn't think it was as bad as like, Watchmen or whatever, 300, but still just too much. So they kill all the soldiers, except for the one good one. And then they're all, she's like, she's just going to, I think she's just going to leave after that. Because like, she's fought the bad guys, she's lost. She can't fight them again. She can't stay because... Uh, they're just going to kill all the farmers. Uh, so this other guy gives her, gives her the idea, well, you know, get some people to fight for us or teach us how to fight. And then, it, like, uh, so that's the whole thing. She, she, her and another, one of the farmers go and try to recruit a merry band of heroes to fight. And I was like, this is, it's like a, the bad guys are just overwhelming. It, it would be like fighting, you know, you get, well, they make it, it's one ship. Anyway. So they go around, they go to off world, they go to, <clears throat> they go looking for the freedom fighters, the blood axes, this brother and sister duo that are fighting the, 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 the empire. <laughs> When they're picking up guys along the way, and they go to this uh, bar, and it, I was like, "This is weird because there's a lot of like sex. There's like the, the sexual assault, and then this pig alien dude tries to, he wants to buy the farmer, like the man, and have like personal relations with him. He tries to buy him from Sophia Batella, so she has to to kill all of them." And that's when Charlie Hunnan, I was like, he looks just like Heath Ledger. And he joins up with them. Like, she's like, what are you, a mercenary, a gun for hire? And he's all, I'm an opportunist. So was, and he just joins up. And at this point, I was like, this is a fine, like, it reminded, this is like the best looking, like, 80s sci-fi movie. Like, it made me think of, like, Space Hunter, Kroll, Battle Beyond the Stars, The Last Starfighter, The Black Hole, Space Raiders, and, and no one likes those movies. <clears throat> I mean, you like them and I like them, but it seems like most people, they, I always thought they were, when I was little, you know, I enjoyed them. I thought they were great. They're not Star Wars, but they're, they're like a little more down and dirty and can do more than Star Wars. <laughs> Um, and I've always liked those movies. And if if I was like ten, 10 and I saw this, I I think I would think this is awesome. There is one part like uh, where Sophia Batella is telling her origin, 
and uh, it looked like uh, one of my favorite scenes in the Terminator series is in part two, where you see in the very beginning, you see a, the battle going on in, in, the, in the, the fighters, the, the Marines, are kind of, they're, um, I want to call them space Marines, but they're fighting the cyborgs, and you just see the battle. And I remember you see one dude's whole chest just light up when they shoot him with the laser. It was a part that was, oh, it's like, it's like that. So that was cool. Uh, there's a lot of alien races in here. There's a spider monster, a lady spider monster. I've been wanting to see a spider monster for a while, so that was pretty cool. Um, there's not as much action as I thought there should be. <clears throat> Overall, it wasn't, it was okay. It was, I would give it a three and a half. There's just so much stuff. Cool outfits and armor and guns. Um, Jaiman is awesome. I really liked, I started to like Charlie Hunnan. And then the Tarek, he reminded me like he could have, be um John Carter. Uh, there's that character called Dan, and I was, was that from like it's got to be from Heavy Metal. But also, as I was watching it, this is written by Zack Snyder and his friends, and I was like, just do what you did, like um, with Dawn of the Dead and Three Hundred. Just get a book, a comic, or an old movie, because he can make the movies look cool. There is one part though where the bad guy. I, it just seems like they do stuff because it looks weird or it looks cool and it has, there's no reason behind it. This guy, the bad guy, Noble, he has these tentacles on him and they look really bad. It looked like from like Farscape or uh, Star Trek. It just did not look... everything. But a lot of this stuff looked really good. But that just was just... Do you, real tentacles. And it made me think like... Uh, and if Zack Snyder, I just wish I could understand it. like what he thinks about what a story is. <clears throat> I think it says Seven Samurai or something is like his favorite movie. So he's just doing that. But um, it's weird, he just doesn't understand. I mean, he's a, obviously a movie fan. I was like, does he read? Does he read comics? Does he watch movies? Has he seen like Scorsese and Lynch and Hitchcock? And, or um, has he seen movies? Because I was like, dude, I could see Dreadstar. Dreadstar is such a good story. Or The New Gods, The Death of the New Gods from DC. Man, I should have just reviewed The Death of the New Gods if I haven't. Or Frank Miller's Ronin. Dude, I think Frank Miller's Ronin is just like tailor made for what Zack Snyder wants to do. Yeah, like I remember I went to see I went to see Sucker Punch in the theater and and I was reading reviews of Rebel Moon and people a lot of people are soulless. Sucker Punch is soulless. His uh, this isn't as soulless as his other movies. There's a little um, it's a, the souls on life support. It's like trying to live. Uh, I like, you know, like a band of, a ragtag band of, of um, mercenaries and good guys and heroes and and like uh, has-beens banding together to fight. It's always cool. But yeah, I just wanted to see, because I, I, I initially I was like, this is going to be garbage. And a lot of the reviews say how terrible it is. It just, I guess, I don't know, I guess, um, I was just thinking about all those other movies, like, Space Hunter, like, those are bad, but they're fun. <clears throat> yeah, there's no humor in this at all. Like, there's not... Uh, I always tell anyone that'll listen, like... I also despise Tool as a band. Where's my 100 com building? Like, Tool's a band that squeezes every... Micron iota of fun and happiness out of music. Dude, a hundred story building drawing and come is just 
revel in happiness and f making good, fun music. Uh, well, maybe not good, but definitely having fun. And yeah, there's nothing. I don't, I don't even think they try to have anything humorous in Rebel Moon. Uh, so there's going to be a part two, and I'll watch it. I'm I'm interested. To, I didn't watch it and just think, oh, I don't care. There's other, like, uh, it's definitely better than Expendables 4. That's for sure. And, man, I want to say this is almost, I enjoyed this. Well, no, Silent Night was better, but I enjoyed this almost as much. <clears throat> It's a lot of stuff going on. Um, so, yeah. I wanted to watch this and still got Twin Peaks going. Yeah, and I was comparing it. I was like, Twin Peaks, David, David Lynch can just film a little scene with no talking and people doing something. And it's it's uh, amazing. And then all this, like it takes all this to just get a spark uh, in the Rebel Moon. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about that. Just yeah, I'm just now I'm fascinated by uh, Zack Snyder and other filmmakers like this who just uh, who like get the chance to make all these movies and could do something awesome or cool or something. Get one real like great action scene or a funny moment or something memorable, and they just can't. It's amazing. So just look at Lemmy, he still lives.